Hi guys, it's Dr. Steve Weiner from the Panhandle of Florida. I'm briefly going to talk to you about chin anatomy for injectors. So this might be basic to you, but this is something you need to understand when doing the chin. So the face is divided into thirds and fifths. So the upper one third of the face is between the trachea and the gabella. And then the middle one third is between the gabella and the subnasion. And the lower one third is between the subnasion and the menton. And these all should be equal. So when you're looking at someone and they have a short or a long lower face, you can compare it to the middle third or the upper third to get an idea of how long that lower third should be. Now, the, the fifths. So the middle fifth should be between the two inner canthi. And that should be the width of the female chin, okay? So that's important. In the male chin, it's actually wider, about as wide as the commissures. So now let's dive down into that lower third that I was just talking about. So there's two measurements there that are pertinent. In this diagram over here, from the subnasion to the commissure, it's one third. And then it's two thirds from the commissure to the menton, the lowest part of the chin. So another way to look at it, and it's not different, just another way to look at it, is on this diagram here, you go from that subnasion to the lower vermilion border, and then from the vermilion border to the menton. And that's 50-50, that's one half, one half. So basically there's three dimensions to the chin. There's length, there's width, and there's projection. So this tells you the length of the chin. Now we're gonna go into projection. And there's two ways to evaluate the projection. It's either with Rydell's line, which goes from the chin through the lips and into the midpoint of the columella. And those should be all along the line, okay? But I like to use this one. This is the Ricketts E-plane, Ricketts aesthetic plane. And you go from the chin to the tip of the nose and you measure how far the lips are away from that line. And it should be two millimeters from the lower lip and four millimeters for the upper lip. So that gives you the projection, and we just went over the length, and now we're gonna go over the width here. So the male chin is gonna be wider than the female. As I told you previously, the female chin should be about as wide as the intercanthal distance. Okay, that's almost the same as how wide the nose is. But in the male, it should be about as wide as the lips are, okay? The other thing that's pertinent in males versus females are there two distinct points in a male chin, and there's only one distinct point in a female chin. How do you go about augmenting or enhancing a chin? Well, you can use either needles or cannulas, and I'm not gonna argue which way, but I prefer to use cannulas. And you need to use a very high G-prime filler. High G-prime filler means it's, it's very sturdy and structured and can support things. And that's what the chin needs. It needs a lot of support, and you need to inject it deeply along the periosteum. The other thing that's pertinent is the blood supply to the chin. And I'll briefly go over that. So you have the submental artery that comes up from below. It comes up and runs usually close to the midline. You also have the labial mental artery, which is lesser known artery. One of your main arteries though is gonna be your mental artery as well as the inferior labial artery. So all those arteries are pertinent. So if you use a cannula, you're probably gonna be safer I use a cannula from lateral to medial, but you can also use short cannulas straight onto the chin, which is a newer technique that I'm starting to use. In regards to using needles, you go down to the periosteum and I would aspirate because you're actually bolusing on the periosteum. If you're moving that needle around, aspiration doesn't make any sense. So I briefly went over the three different dimensions of the chin, the width of the chin, the projection of the chin, and the length of the chin. And I also briefly went over how you inject it. So thanks for listening, Dr. Steve Weiner.